In the world of entertainment, we've seen gigantic properties come and go while some only get stronger. Two of those specific properties are the silly yet strangely patriotic Purge franchise, a series that has so dominated the July 4th release date schedule over the last seven years that it's arguably taken the place of the Transformer franchise as the quintessential American film to watch on our day of independence. And The Walking Dead, a series turned universe that not only has its main show, but a spinoff, a second spinoff, a talk show, a planned movie trilogy, and a side project for one of its main stars to simply just drive around on motorcycles and have fun with his best friends. Clearly AMC intends to make good on their promise that The Walking Dead won't simply be a comic book adapted into one singular television show, but a never-ending franchise that despite any diminishing returns, will in fact never die. But because we are fans of both franchises and this is the internet, we're allowed to ask the question that you clicked on to answer, could Daryl Dixon survive the purge? So before we get into this, I want everyone to go down, hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell over by the subscriber button to notify you every single time I upload because if you do that, it shows your interaction and the fact that you want more videos like this. You were made for how things are now. I'm just used to this. Anyway, the premise of the video is going to go a little bit something like this. We're going to take Daryl Dixon outside of the world of The Walking Dead and put him in the world of The Purge sometime in 2019 or 2020. The winning conditions are as followed. Survive a 12-hour period of The Purge while also being able to survive until the very next year. And the losing conditions are as followed. Dying during the 12-hour event of The Purge or subsequently getting arrested during the events of the other 364 days a year, which would eventually lead to his death regardless. And while this might come as a shock for most people due to what they know about The Purge is the fact that after its creation in the year 2017 and its widespread application in 2018, the annual holiday transformed the nation making unemployment down to 1% while crime is at an all-time record low. However, as the series has progressed, that is starting to seem increasingly unlikely. As the in-universe government of the Purge franchise, known as the Founding Fathers, throughout the entire series run have been shown to be a little less than trustworthy. So in order to understand the rules and get a broader understanding of what Daryl Dixon would have to survive if he was put in the world of the Purge, we're going to have to take a couple minutes to go over the NFFA and what it is that they built with The Purge. So starting in somewhat of an unconventional timeline scheme, we begin in the fourth film of the franchise known as The First Purge. In this film, we're told that in 2014, the turmoil caused by the government is overthrown by the new founding fathers. And through the combined efforts of Dr. May Updale and Arlo Sabian, the NFFA announces an experiment to be taken place on Staten Island where for 12 hours, citizens will be allowed to purge and release their inhibitions in any way of their choosing. The NFFA offers residents of the island over $5,000 just to stay in their homes and stay out the night instead of abandoning the island in order to stay safe. During the events of that first purge, the NFFA realized that multiple parties were opting to use their free pass for any crimes in order to just loot and vandalize things, and that their speculation that people were willing to murder each other might have been falling flat. In response to this, the people in charge of the first purge end up sending out trained mercenary groups to kill multiple civilians in order to inflate the number of casualties and make the purge look like a success. It's these mercenaries who wore masks and started the annual tradition of doing so. When Dr. Updale, one of the creators of The Purge, learns of these activities, she protests this, but she's later sent away onto the island and killed by the NFFA. This is important because as we saw in episode 5 of season 2 of The Purge entitled House of Mirrors, Dr. Updale's book, Foundation of the Experiment, unauthorized, was in itself a bestseller within The Purge universe, and that her literature and involvement with The Purge uprising was taken by the NFFA and expanded upon, even going as far as underlining her death as a symbol of her dedication to the purge instead of the fact that she killed herself or was even murdered by the government. And that's just one example of a continuing line of horrendous acts that we've seen committed by the NFFA within the Purge universe. Because just in season two of the television show alone, we found that the NFFA is willing to take out anybody who breaks the law anytime between or even milliseconds after the events of the Purge. With the second season of the Purge exploring a little bit more into the criminal justice system, we learned that even a nonviolent crime committed after Purge hours 
powers is reason enough for death by execution at the events of the next purge. And the NFFA is tracking and categorizing every single American that breaks the law at any given point during the year. So much so that even if you run a stop sign, you're on their radar and are looked into to make sure you're not a potential threat. So where does that leave Daryl Dixon, played by Norman Reedus in the Walking Dead universe? Well, in order to fully understand and break apart whether or not Daryl would survive the purge, we have to look a little bit into his character and everything that has been told to us about his backstory. And that's one of the reasons why this is such an interesting question, because Daryl's character, unlike the vast majority of main characters within the series, that even despite their departures from the characters within the comic books as adapted to screen, is a wholly original character to the TV show. Now, given his immense popularity amongst the Walking Dead fan base, the showrunners of the series have decided not to go super far into his backstory in one particular episode, but to trickle it out in key moments throughout the entire series. As such, even at the time of recording this video and the fact that the Walking Dead television franchise has been airing for 10 years now, we do not know everything that we could possibly know about Daryl and his backstory and exactly where he was, what he knew, and what he was doing leading up to the events and during the start of the zombie apocalypse. And before anyone goes down to the comments section to tell me the entire story of the Walking Dead Survival Instinct video game that was released that focused on the events and backstory of Daryl Dixon and his mother Merle before his introduction in episode 3 of season 1 of The Walking Dead, I just want to say that while we're going to be covering that in this video, because it is a video game, we cannot take it as canon for the series just yet. The reason for that being is that AMC seems dead set on making The Walking Dead an entire extended universe, and two of its main players for that are in fact Norman Reedus and Melissa McBride, both of which signed a three-year contract for the universe of the entire series, and it seems clear that with Andrew Lincoln, Denai Guerrera, and Norman Reedus as some of the main players throughout this franchise, that they're going to keep everyone alive, at least for the foreseeable future and the next decade worth of content that they're planning. As such, I'm willing to bet that AMC, Scott Gimple, or whoever is involved at any given time is going to find that Daryl Dixon and his backstory is a rather flexible narrative device for anything that they want to build up or point they want to make for something in the future. So with that being said, what do we really know about Daryl Dixon? We know that he was introduced in episode 3 of season 1 of The Walking Dead entitled Tell It to the Frogs. And that while he might have been originally conceived as a minor character, he made his way up to a fan favorite in season 2 and even up to the series lead 10 years later. In season 4 episode 12 entitled Still, we got the most comprehensive explanation as to who Daryl was before the outbreak of the zombie apocalypse, as he spent most of his life just jumping around from one place to another getting in trouble with his brother Merle. In the Survival Instinct video game we learn a little bit more about his backstory as the game tells us that Merle and Daryl used to live in the mountains of Georgia. During their childhood Merle would often be in juvenile detention centers and as as we've learned a little bit more about Daryl and his father during the course of the Whisperer War, we know that his father was an abusive drunk. As for Daryl's mother, she burned to death during a fire when he was very young. But perhaps most important of all to the question of whether or not Daryl Dixon could survive the purge, either with the experience gained through the zombie apocalypse or not, we know that at the start of the series, Daryl was already a capable tracker with proficiency in several weapons, including handguns, shotguns, and even his signature crossbow. And possibly even most important, we know that Daryl was capable of surviving for nine days alone in the wilderness when he was just a small child. So it seems pretty clear cut given the skills on display that Daryl Dixon could in fact survive the purge. However, there is one thing that we have come to know about that particular franchise, and that is through 12 straight hours of death, destruction, and debauchery, even just one slip up can mean the difference between life and death. So it's not just about the skills that you have, but also the company that you keep. And Daryl has one major loose end in that department, his brother Merle. One of the reasons that Merle is Daryl's most significant hurdle is because as we saw in season 3 of The Walking Dead, even after learning that his brother had kidnapped some of his best friends and was working for their enemy at the time, Daryl was not able to let Merle go so quickly and insisted that if he had to go back to the prison, 
that Merle would be a part of that package. And though Merle's been dead in the Walking Dead universe for quite some time now, if they were going to be taken out of their universes and placed in the Purge universe, it's possible, if not incredibly likely, that he would still be alive. Especially since 2019 would mark just the second annual Purge for the entire United States. And given Merle's comparable survival skills to that of his little brother, even despite his more let's call them unique methods, it would seem highly likely that the Dixon brothers would be able to survive at least the very first purge. But this is where we're going to have to start breaking down the different situations and conflicts that the Dixon brothers might find themselves in within that universe. And given everything that we've already discussed, there's no better place to start than the NFFA themselves. Among some of the most important things to note here are things that we just started learning about within the purge universe with the study done by Professor Drew Adams in the X exploration into Ben Gardner's character from the second season, one of the main focuses has been the lasting impact of people who participated in the purge, with the conclusion being that certain people might be addicted to violence after they experience it the first time. And given what we know about Merle's character and his existence in the Walking Dead television show, and not even to mention the introduction of him in the Survival Instinct game, where we were told that he was taking out cops and walkers alike regardless of whether or not they were bit, given these developments it's likely that Merle would have survived the first annual purge, but that the freedom of doing whatever you want for 12 hours would have stayed with him for the rest of the year, and that the NFFA would have marked him as a potential threat going forward. They might have even created him as a target for the 2019 annual purge. And while it is unclear at this moment the amount of firepower the NFFA would expend just to kill one if not two people in the mountains of Georgia, because at this point it does seem clear that the NFFA likes to blend in with all other civilians who are purging at any given time, in order to take out their specific target, usually the poor if not somebody that they've targeted directly as a potential threat for any other day of the year. What we do know about the NFFA is that in season two episode six entitled Happy Holidays, they have almost unlimited access to any camera including personal phone cameras if given authorization. Couple that with 12 hours of hunting and almost an unlimited supply of weaponry, I'm not sure that the Dixon brothers would be able to survive an entire night if specifically targeted. So given Daryl's dedication to his brother and the high probability that Merle would find himself in a dark spiral after the first nationwide purge, coupled with the thought that anything that he was doing was being covered up by the NFFA as they were feeding different narratives to the media, and a seemingly logical conclusion that the corruption surrounding the government was going to allow you to do whatever you wanted all year long, it seems pretty clear that Merle's erratic and sometimes violent behavior would put him on the NFFA's watch list and would spell almost certain death for the Dixon brothers in the 2019 purge. But what if Merle was dead or somehow predisposed before the events of the first annual purge? Because most of what we know about Merle comes from Daryl's recounting that he spent a vast majority of his life behind bars. And given the events of season 2 episode 3 entitled Blind Spot, it's pretty clear that the NFFA does not take kindly even to non-violent offenders who might otherwise have sparkling clean records and a history of public service. And Merle Dixon is not a man who's dedicated his life to public service. And if given the green light on that first day, it seems likely that the government would take the opportunity to take out any of its remaining prisoners that they deemed a threat. So with Merle gone, does Daryl have a chance of surviving the purge against the NFFA? And the answer here I believe is a resounding yes. Because as we talked about moments ago, even before the start of the zombie apocalypse, Daryl was already living away from urban areas like Atlanta, Georgia, and was fully capable of living off the land for multiple days. And despite Merle's history of violent aggressions, Daryl doesn't seem to have any of those tendencies. This is made rather clear as, by rough estimations, Daryl during the events of the entire Walking Dead franchise has killed at least over 50 people, and who knows how many zombies. And while all the information given during the events of the Purge movies isn't what you would call thorough, if we take it at face value, it does look like the NFFA primarily focuses on large urban areas, lower income people, and the homeless. Hypothetically, this would mean that so long as Daryl took extra precautions not to get on their radar, or do anything noteworthy enough that would demand his execution at the start of the Purge, then he would find himself in a safe position, at least against the government. This brings us into our second category, 
Could Daryl Dixon survive the purgers? By a brief definition, these would be the men and women who take to the streets during the 12 hours of the purge in order to release the beast. And just by simple visual cues, it's impossible to know exactly what Daryl would be up against if he found himself face to face with a bunch of different purgers. We've seen these people use bats, crowbars, handguns, shotguns, machine guns, drones, flamethrowers, four-wheelers, have death buses, and just in general anything that you can really think of. Luckily, what we know about Daryl Dixon, if left to his own devices, I truly believe that he would opt out of any participation within the purge and would keep to himself in the wilderness of Georgia. It's even highly likely that he would willingly set up camp around a week before the annual night and set up perimeters with traps for anyone who might come stumbling by. This way, he would actively stay out of harm's way, but he would be protected just in case. But just like with the last group, we have to talk about Daryl if Merle is still in the picture. And even though I find it much less likely that either of the Dixon brothers would survive the night if Merle was involved, I'm still going to have to give them the win and say that they would indeed survive the night. When it comes to the average purger that we've seen throughout the movies and television shows, usually what we're looking at is a bunch of 9 to 5 paper pushers, people who have a lot of built-in anger with no place to put it. In reality, these are the people who would spend more of their time fantasizing about their action hero persona during the events of the purge instead of training for that night. They might be rich enough and capable enough to buy the necessary equipment, but they wouldn't really know how to use it. And based off of everything that we've talked about in this video, it's very clear that Daryl and Merle are both very equipped at all types of weaponry and indeed work well as a team in order to survive. So assuming that they have each other's backs during the events of the purge and that they do not commit any crimes after the final bell is rung, then I would give them the advantage of surviving their first purge and even going as far as surviving until the very next one. However, I must note that as long as Merle is alive, I feel like he would continuously push Daryl into more and more chaotic situations during those 12 hours. And eventually, despite how well they work as a team and how much more experience they have than the vast majority of people who are purging, their luck would finally run out and karma would quickly catch up to them. So I really don't see the Dixon brothers surviving any more than maybe 5 if not 10 years of the purge. In our last category, we're going to have to talk about can Daryl Dixon survive? survive the rich. Some of the things that we've seen touched on in the Purge universe is that while the rich support and even participate in the Purge, they're not willing to go out and participate along with all the other Purgers. In order to feed the beast, as it were, we've seen them pay off poor families in order to offer up a sacrificial lamb for a rich family to purge on the night. We've also seen poor people be abducted simply to be put on auction for rich people to bet on to get their purging fix. Now, for one, I just want to point out that I don't believe Daryl or Merle would put themselves up for a sacrificial lamb, even if they were falling on hard times financially. So that one's just not going to happen. But the other alternative there I think is rather interesting and worth exploring. It's possible that with his criminal background and the hot-headed nature of Merle Dixon, that he would accidentally or maybe even intentionally piss off someone that he really shouldn't have. And that person would retaliate not by killing the Dixon brothers, but would find a moment to abduct them and put them on the auctioning table for all the rich people during the purge. And the only real question here is could the Dixon brothers or even Daryl himself survive that type of selective purging? And I'm going to have to be inclined to say no. In the second film of the franchise, Purge Anarchy, we saw Frank Grillo's Leo Barnes survive this type of selective purging but only with the help of resistance fighters who showed up at the very last second. The events of that movie take place during the sixth annual purge when things are starting to really have an uprising. And if we're taking it as far as looking at the purge in 2019 or even 2020, it's unclear whether or not there would be that much of a groundswell at that point to have resistance fighters go in in such a dangerous area. So that even if Daryl and Merle are both equipped at fighting, it's likely that they wouldn't have been enough to overcome the heavily armed participants of this selective purging method or the armed guards that they would inevitably send in once things start going south. So with all that being said, it seems like our analysis has finally come to an end. When it comes to the NFFA, so long as Merle is in in the picture, it seems like Daryl couldn't possibly survive either the 12 hour events of the purge or even an entire year leading up to the very next one. But when dealing with regular civilians, whether or not he's alone or with his brother Merle, 
it seems like both of them are far more than capable of surviving the night and up into the next year. And finally, if dealing with rich people, so long as he's by himself, he's more capable of surviving, but with Merle, it's more likely that he's going to be kidnapped and auctioned off to the highest bidder. And if that's the case, then neither of them could possibly survive given the events in 2019. So with that, I feel like we have thoroughly discussed this issue and I hope everyone enjoyed the entire ride. I hope everyone will go down to the comment section below and tell me their thoughts and opinions about whether or not Daryl Dixon could survive the purge and anything that I might have missed in this video. At the same time, I hope everyone would like and even share this video in order to show your enthusiasm for the type of content that we're creating on this channel and show me that you want more just like it. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell over by the subscriber button to notify you every single time I upload, especially if it's a video like this one. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day. It's been real.